In this video, we're going to look at why social authentication is so important for user trust in our apps, and then we're going to implement it with Superbase and Flutterflow. Right, so uh, why do I think this is so important to put in our app, especially if we're small niche app builders? Because doing a bit of research, it's not very scientific, but bear with me. Um, Looking on Reddit, there was I, was, I saw a, a post on Reddit about this and it made me think, you know, this is important that we, we should definitely include this stuff. So um, I've got one here. It says like how and it's people responding to a question about how many people sign up with Google Auth or GitHub or Microsoft or whatever. And how many people sign up with email and password. So I've got one here, a few responses. We've got 7% Google, 10% email password, 10% Microsoft, 10% LinkedIn. We've got 9% uh, Google, 9.9% email, 0.1% everything else. And that's a, a, a large B2C service for enterprise B2B, which was 70% email, 30% Google, which I guess makes sense, but still quite a big chunk. Then we've got 95% um, Google, 5% Microsoft and username and password. Then we've got 80% Google, 50% email, 5% Microsoft. And then like from a personal perspective, if I go to an Apple website and there's an option of Google or uh, Apple ID or whatever, I'm always going to go for that because it's just easier. It's a bit more trustworthy on a website that you don't know. Um, so it, it's you know, so I think for generating trust with people that come to your website and your users, having these as options takes a massive step to somebody going, do you know what? I will sign up for this because I can do it with Google. Just one click. You see the auth screen agree to the uh, the scopes that you're allowing the app to use and away you go and it's also on its most basic form which is what I'm going to show you really easy to set up so uh, you may have got an email as we all did from um, Flutterflow reasonably recently telling us that Superbase was now compatible with Google Earth now of course it probably all was has been oh uh, it has always has been I guess um, but you previously needed to use custom actions which we're going to go into uh, but now it's built in which we're not going to use in this tube in this video that's not going to do it we're going to do it with the custom actions because that way we can use google and we're going to use google and github um for this so and it works with with us as well so the action that you get and if you go in here um enable google authentication and i thought oh this is handy because it's gonna make life easier because you just put your um google api key in and away you go however i think that this probably well, this is the case for me when I tried it, and I'm probably assuming it's still the case. You put your Google ID in there, but you need to put your I iOS client ID as well, and that is a required field. So unless you've got one of those, you're not going to be able to use it anyway, unless Flutterflow have changed that since I tried it when it first came out. If they have changed it, great. You can use that. If not, because even if you're building for iOS, you may not have that yet. You may be you know, really in early stages, just setting up your authentication, and you might not have that. So... We're not using that. We're going another way. So I'm going to go into it now, and I'll show you first GitHub, and then Google. Right. So starting with GitHub, uh, if you come into your GitHub settings, you've got your profile, and then if you which gets your settings via just over here, your settings, and then you scroll down to the bottom, you have got developer settings, and you've got your OAuth apps. So we've got auth test. That's the one that I've got set up for my blank auth template. And I've got test, which is one I'm just going to run through now. This is just one that is just purely for the purpose of this. So essentially all you do, you have to, when you get the screen to set this up, you have to type in the application name, your homepage URL, which is the URL of your app. So if we go into your URL configurations, that's this one, um, which could, could be that, could be you know, obviously a Flutterflow when it could be a custom domain, depending on how you've done it. The application description is optional, and then you need your callback URL, which I'll show you where you get that from in a second. And then basically you just get an option to save it, and this is the this is the screen you come to, and there you'll get your client ID, which you need to copy and paste into Superbase, and you'll generate a client secret, which will ask you to log in to do so. And then you get a client secret here again, which you can copy and paste into Superbase. So I'll go into the Superbase side now and show you what we do just there. So 
in Superbase, if you go authentication and providers, you get this list, which you've probably seen, list of all the different auth providers you can use with your Superbase based apps. We're dealing with GitHub now. We're gonna look at Google in a minute. The uh, process is essentially the same. So your client ID you'll put in there. Now I've, for obvious reasons, I've just removed the one that I'm currently using. And your client secret, you will copy and paste into there. And then the callback URL, which you put in your app you create in GitHub to have to use OAuth is that's what you put in there and this is where you where you get it from so to make this work on the super base side in its minimum form that is all you have to do we have got something else which I'm going to do right at the end which is a trigger to populate your public dot users table rather than your auth dot just your auth dot users table but on essentially in its simplest form this is all you have to do to make it work on the super base side so if we head over to Flutterflow, uh, this is the create account page. So you see we've got the buttons for Google and GitHub. They are just standard buttons, just using uh, the icons for GitHub and Google. So in a bit of text, they look look pretty good to me. So on here, all you're doing is calling a custom action, and this one's called GitHub Auth, and the one for Google is called Google auth basically they're just two very simple custom actions very small function so let's take a look at those next so Google auth github let's start with github so we're not returning any values and we're not adding any parameters into it and it's pretty simple we're calling the calling the function we're using the Superbase client auth and then this command if you look in the Superbase docs this commands there it's signing with oauth provider and then whichever provider you've chosen to use so that will be whichever one of these are and what that does then is triggers the auth provider to show you the auth screen where you log in agree to the um, the usage of your email address whatever the whichever scopes that the, the app is going to use and then you're logged in and you're good to go and that will put you as a you app user within the within the auth table users table which we currently ha don't have any so took them out so i can display it so i can show you this so that's basically it so this will be available on a link down below as usual um so i'm just going to demonstrate the github sign in and then we'll go and look at the google creating the credentials you need and then we'll look at the trigger function for the for the um public dot users table on our create account page if we continue with github well this is the auth screen that to sort of authorize the app now one of the things about i'm using superbase for instance and you can't put custom domains so if you're going to do this and not just for test purposes or internal purposes or whatever you're going to want to change that because nobody's going to sign up to that it looks pretty dodgy so all you do though is email address read only that's all it's going to use authorize it and then you're being redirected and you are logged in to the application if you've seen any of the videos you've seen this dashboard blank dashboard before so if i go to the super base side we have now got a new user provided GitHub logged in. So what I'll do now, I'll do exactly the same thing with Google and uh, I'll show you that, the all screen that we get from there. So now we're gonna sign in with Google, click on continue Google button, up comes the the auth box essentially, which account do you wanna use? So you've got the the URL again, if you could, you really need that to be a custom URL obviously and then it tells you what scopes that you're going to be sharing click on and it's a one click sign in and there you go you are in that's Google Auth done so we'll go now we'll have a look at Superbase and we'll show you the new user there Auth Google and if we go to the users table we're also automatically populating that just with the email address and the user ID for uh, with a trigger function when you when you sign up so 
if you want to then use that information to create more more things with the user you know more options then uh, it automatically goes in there i'll show the trigger function shortly so now what we'll do now we'll go to google cloud and quickly look at how you sign up for for to, to register your app for google auth right so uh, this is the google cloud console now if you are used firebase you'd probably seen this before now i'm using the project auth so you go in create new project and then give it a name and then you create it and then what happens is you need to click on and create the OAuth consent screen and it will go through and it will ask you to do add in what your app's called if that's go edit app this is what you have to fill in to to be able to get the API keys to use this so give you up a name e email for support just do I've only done the required fields Again, you know, you'd want to fill all these out properly, I guess. Um, the authorized domain is your callback domain from Superbase, which we talked about earlier, and then de developer contact information. And what that will then do, um, once you've done that, if you save and continue, it'll ask you what scopes you want to use, and that is what information that you want to be able to use up to see from the users and depending on how sensitive that, inf sensitive that information is will depend on a if they'll let you do it straight off the bat and b if your app will need approving by google so you can add and remove scopes there's tons of them i've just got the basic ones just literally for logging in and then i've got no restricted scopes because they are you you you, you have to go jump through quite a lot of hoops with google to be able to do that this is as you can see it's much much more involved than using the um, GitHub login, save and continue, and then you can add test users. Now I've got this as a test app, um, so it doesn't go live that way. Again, you don't have to have Google uh, approve it. So what we've done, you can have up to 100 users. There's actually half a dozen on here, but I've deleted them all for obvious reasons just to show this. So that's it, and then your credentials, once you've gone through all that, your credentials will be in the credentials menu on the left so you just go in there and you've got your credentials there's apis and services at the top so when you've gone through your OAuth like consent screen you'll have this option where you can add users and sort of basically make amendments to it and then your credentials that you need to put into superbase is what you'll get from here so if you've got the client id and then there will be a client secret which again um, you copy and paste into Superbase which I'll just quickly show you now before we go on to the callback uh, sorry the trigger functions right, here we are back in the Superbase side so we've got Google Auth enable sign in with Google to tick the box put your client ID in there your client secret which you would get from the Google Cloud Console that we, just, that we looked at a minute ago and then there's your callback ID so it really is very similar to github um, and it's and it's pretty easy to set up so that's all you do um, so now let's go and look at some trigger functions so if we go over to the sql editor this is the function that is being called when a new user signs up and what we do um, we have to create a trigger function to call it so essentially this creates the trigger and what basically what it says is execute the function update public users after an insert on auth users table and what that does then is triggers the function we've just had up which is this one and basically what we're doing we're taking the user id email and i've added phone in here as well for the when i'm doing the sms api thing for the um for the 2FA security and API video. So we've got that and they are creating the user in our public users table. So that's the one we did a few minutes ago from Google. Um, so yeah, so that's how you do it. And then your trigger functions themselves, if you go functions are in triggers and you're looking for the auth one because it's an auth 
it's an auth function so after an insert we trigger the function update public users you can't do anything with them in here it's read only you have to do them in the sql editor and it has to run a security definer because it's dealing with auth uh, also i do not have as you can see the search path set up for this which i must do and i should do and you must do it's obviously for security purposes so that would go in there so yeah so these this 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 function the create trigger function and the drop trigger so again you can't delete it from the um from the database sorry from the authenticate sorry the database side you have to do it from here these will all be down below along with the custom actions that we looked at right at the very beginning in flutterflow which all you have to do to use those if you want to use any different authentication users and we go to not oh, sorry providers um basically it will be provider dot whoever it is so if you've got you know it'll be with this of you saw we're using provider dot github and provider dot google in our in our examples but it'll be to call to get access to this here to trigger your auth screen to come up to allow you to log in it'll be provider dot discord or you know provider dot twitch Whatever it may be so that's how you do it like i said at the very beginning this is in its basic form there's not really done anything with any potential error handling and whatnot but this does work and if you get in just want to get something rapid set up and to function this will do the job hopefully you've learned something you can use in your applications and i will speak to you next time